Hi guys, it's product teardown time. I've got a Fitel S148 fiber optic fusion splicer here. This is a device used to splice bare fiber optic cables together. I uh, picked this up for 20 bucks at the Telus Surplus store. These originally cost many tens of thousands of dollars, so I'm not quite hopeful this is working, but uh, let's take a look at it. Comes with a power supply, uh, the main unit itself and some little accessories and things for doing the splicing. Let's take a look at this unit. Here's the main unit. Um, it's got a little control panel, a LCD screen. Um, let's see, it's been calibrated last in 2005. Uh, yeah, under this thing is where you put the fiber. Those are the little things that hold the fiber down. And there's two uh, little points for an arc gap, and I think that's what's used to actually melt the fiber together. Uh, let's turn this thing on and see if it works. The power supply just clips on the back here. Um, let's see, we have I.O. connectors here. RS-232 video, I guess, so we can see what's on the screen on a bigger monitor. And a fuse. Well, it beeped. I guess that's somewhat of a good sign. Oh, yep, the uh, screen is actually on. It just has a very horrible viewing angle. So we can get this thing off. Maybe it's the contrast. Yeah, there we go. Arc check. That's, seems it changes when you open that. Let's do an arc check. Ready. load fiber. I guess we'll have to get a few of those fiber scraps and uh, put them in here and see if this thing will work. We should be able to see this a little bit better now. Let's see if we can get into these menus. How do we do this? There we go. Arc check. Let's see if we can do that. <clears throat> the little micro positioners are moving right now. Looks like it's, yeah, it's failed because there's no fibers in, I'm assuming. When you open this thing up after the arc check fails, it opens the uh, micro positioners. You can see them moving really, really slowly. I think you're supposed to uh, cut the end of these fibers with a special uh, thing called a cleaver to make the uh, to make the end uh, cut off at a perfect right angle. But this didn't come with that tool, so we'll see what this does. And we'll run that arc check again. didn't seem to like that. Maybe I loaded them too far apart. Looks like when you jiggle these little, uh, these little pins on the top here, when you jiggle them, the, I guess they move the fibers a bit. This doesn't seem to have X and Y positioning, only Z. I think some newer machines may have X and Y positioning as well, so this is not the best. Let's try it again. Maybe something's wrong with it. Let's see what else this thing has in the menu. F 
fiber program. Let's see also the different types of fibers, maybe different types of fibers to each other. I don't don't know if that makes sense. Heater program. Probably for the arc uh, heat that actually melts the fibers together. Splice data. Must be a history of the uh, splices that have been done. Other configuration. Counter 439. That's not too many. Temperature, pressure, pressure. I wonder if this thing have a barometer in it. I'm guessing it might because they probably have to adjust the arc character, or the arc current based on altitude. How do I go back? Looks like I'm changing something. Cancel. Environment. <laughs> yes, it does have a barometer in it. And uh, a uh, humidity meter. <laughs> I think this is the first instrument I've ever seen that actually has a barometer inside of it. Manual operation, that might be fun. Controls. Adjust, plus and minus. Ooh, nice. See if we can select the other one now. There we go. Let's see if we can join these two fibers. Okay, how do we fire the arc now? This button? Nope, that was not what we wanted. Yeah, it looks like these two cameras are aiming at uh, 90 degrees like that, so you can uh, see from both angles how they're going together. And it looks like... Yeah, in here there's a uh, couple of mirrors. It looks like they're bouncing off light from those two LEDs off, and the cameras must be sort of going down at a 45 degree angle through the two, uh, between where the arc gaps are. View arc step arc arc step cleaning. Let's see if we can change that to splice arc step. Let's see if we can. There we go. Off. How do I turn it off? There we go. Well, it's done something. It's melted them together. Though, I have to wonder how good that is. That's probably a completely uh, horrible splice. What else can we do? We have arc step additional. We can heat it more. Let's see if we can actually see the arc. Uh, I wonder if it'll run with the cover open. It doesn't seem to want to run. Um, let's see if we can bypass the interlock on this thing. Anyway, let's have a look at that uh, fiber we spliced. Now yeah, it's going to be difficult to get the camera to focus to this. We also have to 
Zoom out. Yeah, you can't really see where the splice actually is. Let's continue through these menus, see if there's anything else interesting in here. Dust check. Looks like it's... Is it drawing something, or is that just a progress bar? Fail. <laughs> Nineteen eleven. <laughs> I wonder if this thing's Y two K compliant. No, it's not. <laughs> so that time, that date is actually correct. It's pretty correct. Keep counting for the rollover. Okay, looks like that's all that's in that those menus. Let's have another go at splicing. I know this is not how you're supposed to cut the ends on, the, on these fibers, but we'll see if it does anything better than whatever the current ends have. Also probably not the recommended way of handling these fibers. And it turned itself off. Ooh. And as expected, they're not clean at all. Uh, no arc check. Let's see if an auto will work. Nope. Let's try manual again. There we go. Still not very good. I'm going to try to get around the interlock so we can actually see the arc on this thing running. The interlock in this uses a magnetic switch, so now we can see the arc. Uh, just a little arc completely silent, sort of like a flyback transformer produces. That's probably what there is in there. Uh, let me try getting a closer view on that. That seems to be pretty much all we can do with this right now. Uh, stay tuned for a teardown video or uh, see, what's, see if there's any interesting parts in this or if it's maybe possible to fix it. Anyway, thanks for watching.